Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this month's webinar. The topic is Tobacco Cessation, Taking Back Control of Your Health. And our presenter is Carla Fleming, and she is a health coach with Strategic Health Services. Carla? Thank you, Don. Hello everyone. Yes, my name is Carla Fleming, and we will be talking and discussing Tobacco Cessation, Taking Back Control of Your Health. So I'm sure most of us have heard the slogan, winners don't quit. Well, when it comes to tobacco use, nothing could be further from the truth. You win when you quit. So what we're going to cover is tobacco and its effects on health, the benefits of quitting as well as pathways to tobacco cessation. And it's with great hopes that this information will be helpful and useful no matter at what stage you are. That is, if you're contemplating or preparing to quit, or if you have already stopped tobacco use and just need a little help maintaining your new lifestyle. So what can we learn about tobacco use from a st statistical standpoint? Even though there has been a significant decline and cigarette smoking in the past five decades among adults, the use of emerging tobacco products has increased in recent years. So about 21.3% of adults that's age 18 years or older use tobacco products every day or some days. That's 40 million adults, or shall we say 17 out of every 100 adults in the U.S. To further break this down by gender, that's like 19 out of every 100 men and 15 out of every 100 women. Now, as far as our youth, which is defined as 17 years old or younger, their rates are just as alarming here in the United States. We have 5.6 million youth that use tobacco products. That's one out of 13 American youth. 3,200 youth smoked their first cigarette by 17 years of age. 2,100 become daily cigarette smokers. Seven out of every 100 middle schoolers become smokers. And 25 out of 100 high schoolers become smokers. So what is the data showing us about the mortality rates that are associated with tobacco use. Tobacco is the leading cause of death in the United States. It claims about 6 million lives per year worldwide, with 480,000 of those lives right here in the United States. Now, what about secondhand smoke? Most people think secondhand smoke is just the smoke that is from burning tobacco products, which includes like cigars and pipes and cigarettes and so forth. But it is also the smoke exhaled and breathed out by the, the smoker. So there are over 42,000 deaths per year from secondhand smoke exposure. That's 1,300 deaths daily. And according to the CDC, the current trends show that tobacco use will cause more than 8 million deaths annually by 2030. And on average, smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. Now, smoking leads to diseases and disabilities and can harm nearly every organ of the body. More than 16 million Americans are living with disease caused by smoking. So for every person who dies because of smoking, at least 30 people live with a serious smoking-related illness. Some of the common diseases and illnesses caused by tobacco use includes, and here's a list, respiratory disease, cancers, cardiovascular diseases, reproductive problems and conditions, diabetes, and dental diseases. So let's start off with the respiratory illnesses. The first one, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD. Now this is a debilitating lung disease which worsens over time. It is the third leading cause of death in the U.S. Now with this disease, this is pretty much what happens. 
smoking, when you use tobacco uh, products, it stiffens the air sacs of, in the lungs, increases inflammation of the airway walls, and it increases production of mucus in the airways causing obstruction. And this can lead to uh, coughing and wheezing and shortness of breath, which are common symptoms of COPD. Now, lung cancer is another respiratory illness that is associated with smoking. And smoking and tobacco use causes more than four in five cases of lung cancer by damaging the DNA, including the key genes that protect us against cancer. Tuberculosis, also known as TB, is a bacterial infection that can spread through the lymph nodes and bloodstream and often the lungs. So most people are asymptomatic, which means that they don't really have or showing the symptoms because the bacteria can live in an inactive state. But based on some studies that were conducted, there is a correlation between tobacco use and aggravating TB, possibly causing it to move from an inactive state to an active state. And asthma is a common long-term inflammatory disease of the airways of the lungs. So when a person inhales tobacco smoke, it irritates the airways by damaging the tiny hair-like structures in the airways called cilia. And cilia is responsible for sweeping dust and mucus out of the airways. So when they're irritated, mucus could build up, resulting in asthma flare-ups. So next we will dive into how tobacco could lead to cardiovascular disease. Let's begin with peripheral arterial disease, also known as PAD. Now this is a condition when plaque build up in the arteries that carry blood to your head, organs, and limbs. So when plaque builds up in the body's arteries, it's called atherosclerosis. Now, atherosclerosis can cause coronary heart disease, also known as coronary artery disease. With this condition, clots could form and cause obstruction of the blood flow to the heart. Coronary heart disease can cause chest pain, shortness of breath, heart attack, and other major issues. Here we see stroke. Stroke is also a, a form of cardiovascular disease that is associated with tobacco use. Now, it occurs when the blood supply to the parts of the brain is interrupted, depriving the brain tissue of oxygen and nutrients. Smoking is also, and tobacco use, is also known for causing hypertension also known as high blood pressure. This is when the pressure in the arteries is persistently elevated, which is attributed to, narrow, to the narrowing of the small arteries and increased arterial stiffness. So how is all of this associated with tobacco use? It is believed tobacco use promotes PAD, atherosclerosis, and coronary heart disease by its a negative effects on the lipid profile by increasing the LDLs, which is considered your bad cholesterol, as well as your, it increases your total cholesterol and triglycerides, and decreasing your HDLs, which are known as your good cholesterol. And it has the ability to cause inflammation and damage to the arteries. The nicotine in tobacco is known to increase blood pressure and heart rate, as well as increased chances of blood clots forming. So the combination of the narrowing of arteries and blood clots are the right conditions for stroke. There are many cancers linked to tobacco use. Smoking is a leading cause of cancer and death from cancer. These include lung cancer, as mentioned, and discussed earlier, trachea, bronchial, esophageal, larynx, mouth, bladder, colon, and many more. Among the 250 known chemicals in tobacco, at least 69 are carcinogenic, which can cause damage to the DNA. 
It is also known that tobacco has even a more profound adverse impact on health outcomes in cancer patients by potentially causing a second cancer or slowing down the healing process in response to chemotherapy and other treatments. So diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a condition where there are high blood sugar levels over a prolonged period of time. It is usually the result of the pancreas not producing enough insulin or the cells have become desensitized to the insulin that is released. So active smokers have 30 to 40 percent higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared with non-smokers. And tobacco use has been shown to decrease insulin sensitivity in normal, healthy adults and further affect insulin activity negatively in diabetics. And it increased the risk of developing heart and kidney disease, poor blood flow, retinopathy, which is impaired or loss of vision, and peripheral neuropathy, neuropathy which is uh, nerve damage. Now, no matter how young or old you are or how long you have been smoking, it is never too late to quit. So let's kick the habit. So did you know just 20 minutes after smoking tobacco or 20 minutes after smoking tobacco products, your heart rate and blood pressure drops. So just 20 minutes after tobacco use, your heart rate and blood pressure drops. After 12 hours, blood oxygen increases to normal and CO2 level decreases to normal. So two weeks to three months, circulation improves and lung function increases. So depending on the individual, breathing would become easier and energy levels would begin to increase. Three to nine months, coughing and shortness of breath decreases. And by the time you hit your one-year anniversary of being tobacco-free, the risk of coronary heart disease is half of that of a continuing smoker. So when we kick the habit, we are taking that step of taking back our health. You are cutting your risk of most cancers in half, and the stroke risk falls to that of a non-smoker after five years. In 10 years, the risk of lung cancer is half of a smoker, and larynx and pancreas cancer decreases. 15 years after quitting, Coronary heart disease is that of a non-smoker. So we will briefly go into pathways to tobacco cessation. There are many pathways leading to the one goal, or rather the same destination. So one of the most important steps is to set a quit date. But try to set it in two to three weeks so you would have time to prepare. And write your quit date down and reference back to it as you prepare. Tell loved ones and friends when you plan to quit for that additional support that may be needed. And while you're preparing yourself, educate yourself on tobacco cessation and the challenges you can expect to face, but also educate yourself on the benefits of quitting, which outweighs the challenges. Another uh, tip is to track your tobacco use and identify triggers. This can help you overcome challenges you may face and decrease slip-ups. And develop strategies. Again, this is a way to prepare yourself to give you better success and avoid those slip-ups as much as possible. Remove tobacco products from your home or your car and your car and work. And by dry cleaning your, your draperies and your clothes and cleaning your carpets and your comforters, this can help minimize the temptation. 
And remember to talk to your doctor because doctors can play a vital role to you successfully quitting tobacco use by giving some, some other options, by helping you to maybe choose uh, a tobacco cessation medication that is best for you. And some of these can be bought on your own, but some do require a prescription. And that's, which brings us to the other pathways uh, to tobacco cessation. Tobacco cessation medications, these mainly help some cope with the feelings of withdrawal while quitting and increase your chances of quitting for good. You have nicotine gum, patches, inhaler sprays, and lozenges, and these are considered nicotine replacement therapy, which acts as a substitute source of nicotine that reduces the withdrawal symptoms. Bupoprin is a prescription medication that does not contain nicotine but helps with withdrawal symptoms. Chantix is also a non-nicotine prescription that helps with tobacco cessation by targeting the same receptors in the brain that nicotine does and blocking those receptors from nicotine. So whenever you are planning to quit, you should build a support system which can give you the accountability that is needed to help you remain focused. Use your support system to help keep, you guard, keep your guards up and to take back control of your health. Remember, your health coach here at Strategic Health Services is available for additional support you may need. We're going to go a little bit into recovering from slip-ups. Now, in the event there are slip-ups, don't get discouraged and never give up. Figure out what triggered the slip-up and if the strategy you have in place is working or not. And if it's not working, develop a new one. But whatever you do, don't give up. And continue your regimen. Don't stop using your medications if you do have a slip-up. And stay positive and always remember, this is a journey and not a race. You can do it. And also, I wanted to inform you about the Great American Smokeout, which is annually on the third Thursday of November. And it is sponsored by the American Cancer Society. Now, it encourages smokers to stop tobacco use and go the extra distance by taking the first quit step. And by quitting even for one day, you will be taking an important step toward a healthier life. And this concludes our webinar on tobacco cessation. And I just want to encourage you again that you can do it no matter what. Don't quit, keep going. And, under, and remember, your health coach can help. Remember the My Pathway to Health websites offer many different education materials in our health library, as well as interactive tools and calculators. So contact your health coach today, or you could just send us a secure message, and we are here to help you manage your health on a daily basis. Thank you so much for attending the webinar today.